Hi there, my name is Corey Gaddy, Technical Solutions Consultant for TPM. For our 4 Minute Friday today, we're going to talk about the Intersection Design Tool in Civil 3D. Okay, so let's get into the software. Okay, we're in the 2020 version of the product. The Intersection Design Tool is found at the top um, of your menus under Home, Intersections. So we'll go ahead and click on Intersections. And after clicking on intersections, we'll go to create intersection. It wants the intersection point between the two roads. So we'll go ahead out here and go ahead and click on that intersection point. This window pops open. It asks us for our intersection name. All right, so we can call it something if we wanted to. We'll call it road and driveway. All right, and then it asks us for our label style. One thing we have available is standard. We'll leave that. The biggest thing that we're looking at here is whether or not we want it to be the primary road crown maintained or all crowns maintained. So I'll click there on all crowns maintained. All right, and that allows each road to sort of have its crown and they kind of meet in the middle of the intersection. Okay, so we'll go ahead and click on next. All right, and then it looks at the two alignments, the existing road and the drive entrance, showing us our two alignments. Okay, it allows us to create our offset and curb return information. So we'll look at our offset perimeters. So I'll go ahead and click there. All right, so now it's looking at the primary road here, and then it looks at our offset value. So it wants to know how wide one lane of the road is. We have a 36 foot wide road. Okay, we really have three lanes, two through lanes and a turning lane. So we're going to have half of 36, which would be 18. All right, and that's on the right side. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. On the left side, we'll make that 18. The secondary road that we have is just a driveway. All right, it's 24 foot wide. So we have 12 feet on each side. So I'll go ahead and make sure that says 12. And then this other one says 12 as well. Okay, and I'll go ahead and hit OK. So the next thing it allows for us to do is to create our curb return for our alignments. So I'm going to go ahead and click here on curb return perimeters. All right, this allows us to design the intersection. So we have a 25 foot radius for our curb return. So I'm going to make sure my radius reads 25. Okay. Then the incoming road is the drive entrance. Our outcoming going road is the existing road. All right. So those are our perimeters there. And so as long as I have 25 feet there that's going to be for the southeast quadrant okay so that's one side of the intersection the arrow kind of lets you know where you're looking at all right as well as it shows you on the intersection what return it's looking at all right so that's the southeast quadrant then for the southwest quadrant we're going to have the same thing 25 feet there for our, our curb return so we'll go ahead okay there All right, then it also allows us to look at our lane slope parameters so we could change our slope for our lanes if we wanted to. So I'll show you what that looks like. I'm going to lane slope parameters. And then we're looking at our cross slope from center line. All right, we have a negative 2% and a negative 2%, so we could change that if we wanted to. And that's for the primary road. And then for the secondary road, same thing, we have a negative 2 and a negative 2. So if you wanted that to be different, you just go in, in here and change that to whatever slope you want it. All right, and then we look at our curb return profile parameters as well. So that allows us to look at the curb return. And then we have our 25 foot for our radius. All right. Um, and then it allows us to extend the length along the radius as well, um, looking at the tangent. So just different ways to design that curb return and affect how it slopes and how things interact for that curb return. So now that we have all our parameters set, we can go ahead and click on Next. All right, and then it allows us to create a corridor out of this intersection. It's going to be good. We can use that to grade our intersection and add it to our surface. Okay, it allows us to add to an existing corridor or create a new one. All right, then it also allows us to select the surface to daylight to, so it'll try to tie back into the existing surface. 
Other things related to the corridor, you can change these things if you want. I'll just go ahead and click on Create Intersection. All right, so it produces our intersection. So it gives us all our values related to that intersection, showing you stations, the extents of that intersection, and so on. So here's my intersection. All right, it comes in looking like a corridor. The program is actually trying to grade that intersection, just like you would with a corridor. So now that I have this corridor for the intersection, what I can do is create a corridor surface out of that corridor. So I'll click on the corridor, and I'll go up here to Corridor Surfaces. First thing I'll need to do is go ahead and make me a new corridor surface by clicking on this button. Okay. Once that corridor surface comes in, I need to give it a style. So I'll go ahead and click here and give it a corridor surface style. Propose surface. All right, and then I'll need to tell it what part of that corridor I want to use. So what section of the corridor I want to use. And I'm going to go ahead and select the top of that corridor so I can see the top of the surface, the top of the pavement here for the corridor. So I'll go ahead and hit a plus symbol now to add in the top of the corridor. And then I'll hit apply. I'll rebuild that corridor. And I'll go ahead and hit OK. All right. And then when you look over here in your surface style, you'll now see that now we have a corridor for surface there. That's your intersection. So if I hit escape now and look, now you'll see that I actually have a surface there for the intersection. Okay. Just a little bit of cleanup, some things we want to do to adjust that intersection to make it look nice and pretty. But that's the corridor surface for that intersection showing up there for you. So the last thing I would want to do is take this corridor surface and add that into my overall surface. You know, combine that with my driveway surface, whatever surface I want to utilize this intersection design in um, for that surface. So that's what I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching.